get to Senator Marsha Blackburn now of Tennessee Judiciary and Armed Services Committee. She serves on. Senator, your first reaction. My first reaction, Harris, is that uh, malign rogue regimes many times try to take hostages. This is something that is against international norms. Uh, we will see how this progresses with Ms. Greiner. I know that the State Department has been working to try to seek her release and also the release of other hostages. Talk to me, if you can, about uh, the prisoner swap and how that has worked in the past. And can that work with a country that's invaded Ukraine? I mean, the, you, you could not yeah. have higher stakes in all of this. You could not have higher stakes in all of this. And we have individuals that are being held by different regimes at this point in time. Sometimes there is a prisoner swap that does work. Uh, sometimes there is conditions that do work, uh, and many times it depends on the resolute nature of the administration that is making that. You saw uh, these fall apart under Carter. You saw success with Reagan. Uh, you saw success at different times with other administrations, and you have seen failures. So I think, Harris, what you have to do is look at how this administration approaches it. Is it from a, a position of strength or a position of weakness? And unfortunately, right now, with Russia, with China, with other regimes, they look at this administration and they see one of weakness or one that seeks to appease. Well, you have said a lot there. And uh, we know that Brittany Griner spoke right before this whole procession started. So she's been found yes. guilty now. Now we await the sentencing. Let's hear directly from Brittany Griner. I made an honest mistake, and I hope that in your ruling that it doesn't end my life here. That's why I pled guilty to my charges. I understand everything that's being said against me, the charges that are against me, and that is why I pled guilty. But I had no intent to break any Russian laws. To hear directly from her, mm -hmm. I mean, that is yeah. American bravery. That's our branding yes, it is. a world away. Indeed, and we want to get each of these individuals home safely. All right, we will come back to this as we find out more information on what that sentencing could be. Uh, we know it could be up to nine and a half years because that's what Russian prosecutors have been asking for. And, you know, real quickly, Armed Services Committee, I would imagine that you would have some idea of what that would look like. I mean, it's not going to be the prison system that we know here in the United States, I would imagine. And uh, this is one of those things that are items of concern for us when you look at other countries and the different standards. And again, we're going to continue to monitor this just as we are with others that are being detained in different parts of the world, Harris, and uh, the treatment that they receive relying on entities uh, that have the ability to go in and work to protect human rights and to protect these individuals. For us, when we hear these stories about these detentions, wrongful detentions, it is something that is just heartbreaking. You know that their families are suffering, and we work diligently to try to help get these individuals home. We will report the sentencing when we learn it. Senator, let's move to this. Some rare applause for Speaker Pelosi coming from across the political aisle. More than half of the Senate's GOP members have released a statement praising her Taiwan trip. They say the stop was no different than foreign policy moves of the past, and the United States should not back down in the face of China's intimidation tactics. The White House, however, is holding back any praise. Let's watch together. I think that it was good that she went. We cannot dictate and we will not dictate where members of Congress go. Members of Congress, wait, let me, well, we let, that, let me, let me when, finish. When they go, he doesn't dictate it, they go. Now he can say if he thinks it was good or not. I mean, that's not how it works. A political analysis says the Biden administration bungled the messaging big time. 
The fumbling of the public narrative for Pelosi's trip bolstered the Chinese government's depiction of her journey as an inflammatory escalation in United States engagement with Taiwan, is what Politico wrote. Senator Blackburn, I had on House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy yesterday, and he said that the weakness from the White House actually created a window for China to come up with a narrative that made itself look better in all of this and made us look weaker in all of this. That is very true. And remember the days, Harris, when your divisions ended at the water's edge mm -hmm. and you had a, a foreign policy message where everybody was on the same page, pro-America. And Nancy Pelosi was right. I applaud her for making that trip. Members of Congress and our teams have been in and out of Taiwan for years. Uh, the White House knows that members have visited Taiwan and other countries in the Indo-Pacific. And they work to fight against the Chinese Communist Party. And now for the White House to be injecting hesitation into praising this, the State Department to be trying to reframe this, it is inappropriate. We need to be there to support Taiwan, support Taiwan independence. So I, you know, it's, it's taken some days to get clarity on exactly what China would do. And now that they are firing live firing missiles around airspace, and, and we already knew that they were perched on the waterways around Taiwan. Yeah. Now that we know that they are willing to engage their military in this way, unprecedented it's being called for many decades, what is exactly the White House's position? Because they aren't saying what it is, and is that also dangerous? Does it is very dangerous. Yes, indeed it is. We cannot let China or Russia or Iran or North Korea, what I call the new axis of evil, we cannot let them dictate foreign policy to us. And the weakness of Joe Biden and this administration, the hesitancy they have had with dealing with the Chinese Communist Party is causing issues domestically for us. It is causing foreign policy issues. You need to have your allies know that they're your allies and your enemies know that they are your enemies and mm -hmm. that they are going to be held to account. And when you blur those lines, it becomes very difficult. Now, those blurred lines are what is encouraging the Chinese Communist Party to step up to see if we will defend Taiwan. It encourages them to move in to the South Pacific, into the islands. It encourages them moving into South America. You look at what they are doing there, their Belt and Road Initiative, their debt yeah. diplomacy. And in North Africa yeah. with that Belt and Road. That's right, yeah. in Djibouti. That's right. You look at all that, Ooh. yes. Real quickly, um, 18 months, Fox News yeah. is hearing from sources that they could invade. How does a timeline like that get dealt with uh, per the United States, per the White House? Just a quick thought on it. Uh, what we need to do is realize that our uh, foreign policy has to be definitive and that people need to know we will stand with our allies. Well, right now they need to know we're going to stand with each other. Yes. <laughs> right, with the House Speaker and the White House, they got to get together. That's okay. right. Uh, and this is happening right now, too, a Senate Judiciary Committee hearing on yeah. the, quote, oversight of the Federal Bureau of Investigation. So we're looking live now on Capitol Hill, and that is FBI Director Christopher Wray staring down a long list of questions today from senators. The New York Post outlining just how wide the range of topics could be, from Hunter Biden to the January 6th uh, investigation to parent involvement in school board meetings and more. Even Dr. Larry Nasser uh, and, the, and the young gymnasts, the women who were sexually abused and more. Ranking member Chuck Grassley laying it all out in his opening statement last hour. It seems like the Biden Justice Department, the FBI, have focused on intimidating parents. Mm -hmm. Multiple Justice Department whistleblowers have approached my office about that political bias. The FBI greenlit a full investigation into Trump. On the other hand, the FBI closed investigative activities and sources that provided verified or verifiable reporting on Hunter Biden. There is so much to get to. You are part of that committee. You yes. will question Director Ray. What will you ask? 
I am going to ask him about what is happening at the southern border, how we're seeing these terrorists come across. We've had 56 already this year. Harris, that is up dramatically from last year, which was 15. 2019, we had zero coming across uh -huh. that border. This is of concern to everyone. I want to know what he's going to have to say about the Hunter Biden laptop. I want to know what he's going to say about these Confucius Institutes that have come in and the Chinese Communist Party, some of their push to get scientists who are under contract to the Chinese Communist Party into our university campuses. I've got a list, worked on my questions last night. I'm going to step back in that hearing and be ready to, uh, to ask those questions. I, I know you will be, and uh, I hope that Christopher Ray is ready for all of that too, because those are very yes. important questions very for us to know so. the answers to. Senator, thank you for taking a moment to step out of that important Judiciary Committee hearing today. And we'll see you Good soon. Good to be with you. Thank you.